today when somebody really wants to work in the rural or with the rural community a necessary condition is to take a self imposed sabbatical to the rural area be there for at least half a year with the rural communities try to understand them try to understand their aspirations their problems rather than work on preconceived notions buzzword today and india is looking back at rural in a big way now more than ever whether it is the geo who wants to make its presence felt to the last village on the map or a surf excel wanting to make its goal stronger by reaching more and more people strategies are formed every day in board rooms to make sure the rural area is reached better to prepare managers to make these very strategies able professors are needed and i have one such professor from irma with me today professor anand venkatesh who has been teaching at irma for the last 15 years we will talk to him about rural marketing and its importance and his opinion on why he thinks rural is going to be the game changer hi professor anand welcome to inside i thanks a lot for inviting me thanks right uh, professor anand uh, you know you have been teaching at this particular institute for the last 15 years that's a long long time uh, to be teaching at a particular institute right and you must have seen so many bright minds coming in and making uh, so much progress in their life right yes. and you have been instrumental in making these leaders for tomorrow uh, so in all these years uh, professor anand if i have to ask you you know how much of a shift in the education in the way people perceive education to be has changed and have you also adapted to the uh, changes that has taken place in terms of your learning and your teaching experience we are more of a rural management rather than a management institution and i'm saying this with emphasis because it's not an after thought rural management was and is a different discipline altogether from management to elaborate a little unlike the traditional management we are looking at rural management as decision making in the wake of three interacting subsystems the physical the biosphere and the economic relationships rural india you are absolutely right is changing in terms of the economic configuration with the non farm sector kind of taking precedence over the last few years with still agriculture being the dominant sector right but yeah <laughs> so what we are trying to do at irma is that through field based learning experiential learning and dissemination of information in a similar manner we are constantly trying to move out of traditional stereotypes of the rural and for which we have to be abreast not just of the factual things of the schemes going on of the government programs and so on but we need to be abreast with the pulse of rural india which is what we are trying to sort of assimilate or incorporate in our experiential based pedagogy right uh, we we often talk about this fact uh, you know professor anand that uh, the two markets are different the rural market is different the urban market is different right uh, do you do you see that there is a major difference between these two and if you see that difference how different uh, from the usual marketing practices that happens in big boardrooms of mncs is the rural marketing First of all I think at Irma we need to again set the concept in place of rural marketing. I don't know what we mean but I would like to say that when we talk of rural marketing it is not marketing or selling to the rural. Right. It is about ensuring that apart from rural consumers majorly Irma was set up for the rural producer. The rural producers are granted market access and they are the marginalized producers the small and marginal farmers are granted market access and brought to the mainstream so this is a principle of rural marketing with which irma was founded and still works the rural producer is at the centerpiece of our thought process so when we do that we should ensure that the rural producers are brought further into the mainstream granted market access and we should treat the rural producers as well as the consumers as stakeholders in in all the community i would say rather than just mere avenues for profiteering and selling absolutely uh, can you uh, you know 
delve a little deeper on how Amul actually made uh, things happen. Like from the start, uh, if we look at it, uh, if we go back in history, we see that Amul is one of the biggest cooperatives in India, right? Uh, like I, when I was growing up, also I've seen the Amul girl. I still see Amul girl and I follow them. What are the kind of learnings that people can take from these uh, sort of messaging that goes out? If that that makes an idea about a particular brand and what they stand for and how important do you think in a brand's journey that is? If you look at Amul, it started off, yes, we all know Dr. Varghese Korean started Amul. But what may not be apparent for many of us is that it was an ideal synergy between Dr. Kurian and the leaders of the community such as Dr. Tribhuvan Das Patel, Dr. Sardar Vallabhai Patel and so on. This synergy actually led to this miracle called Amul. And apart from that, Amul achieved when many people were saying that some of these things like making milk powder from buffalo milk is impossible. The Amul team said that it is not so and they showed the world when New right. Zealand and the other dairy leaders of the world rubbish Amul's claim, of, Amul's attempts of doing so, they did it. They survived world wars, they survived emergencies, they survived national calamities and so on. And they have also invested in their value. They went for a multi crore, and again, I'm not remembering the numbers here, with IBM. And they have optimized their value chain such that every production unit, every village cooperative society, every parlor's data, is at every product, every stockkeeping unit information is available on real time. So they know where there is surplus, where the resources, where the product are not doing well, how resources can be diverted or shifted from the product which are not doing well to those which need them. So they're able to do that in real time. So because and apart from that, they have been very subtle in their marketing campaign when other companies or related companies, food companies, claim make heroic claims like we can this product of ours will be COVID curer. Amul didn't say anything like that. It launched Haldi food, it launched Haldi chocolates, immune, immunity boosters, without even mentioning that it will cure you of COVID and so on. So the marketing was subtle and apparently it's worked. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and and uh, when we talk about these students, uh, you know, you must have seen so many students over the years, right? I mean, uh, so many classes that you have taken, so many batches that you have undergone. Uh, any student story that has uh, struck with you in terms of even the alumni members who have done amazing work after they have graduated from this particular institute that has stayed with you and made you feel proud about your teaching and mentoring? We have right from batch one, Mr. Sodhi, the man in the MD of Amul too. We have several other people who have done wonders, wonders in the rural area. Just to take one or two examples, uh, Mr. Rajiv Khandelwal, who's tried to work and who's worked very effectively for the betterment of informal labor through his Ajivika Bureau organization. Me, Ms. Minu Vadera, who has made a taxi aggregation unit of female taxi drivers. The list goes on and on, but I would like to share something, a batch which I had just joined, which was within Irma. During their stint at Irma, they adopted a slum area in Anand city and they worked towards, the whole batch literally worked towards improving the educational aspect of the rural community, the rural children, right. incorporating skills to them. This is called the Ekta Nagar initiative, Ekta Nagar being the slum area, I told you. Right. And this has gone on for more than a decade. And that has sustained and such initiatives are some things which I'm really proud of. Though I cannot take credit for it, it was just happening during my time, it was a collective effort and the Irma itself brings out such attributes. Sure. To Absolutely. Uh, Professor Anand, uh, if we specifically talk about India, uh, India is going through a digital transformation at this point yes. in time, right? Uh, yes. uh, I, I go to villages and I see Paytms being accepted. Yes. Uh, I go to villages and I see that they are more, uh, you know, uh, prone to accepting technology than maybe I am, right? Mm -hmm. And in the world of uh, internet, in this world of dissemination of information that is happening, how difficult or easy do you think it has become to penetrate the rural market for these companies and entrepreneurs who are thinking new things that they can develop for them? 
what I may say may border slightly on the unglamorous, but nevertheless, I should say it is that today when somebody really wants to work in the rural or with the rural community, a necessary condition is to take a self-imposed sabbatical to the rural area. Be there for at least half a year with the rural communities, try to understand them, try to understand their aspirations, their problems, rather than work on preconceived notions that the rural will easily accept digital or they won't accept digital and so on. As you said, there are some counterintuitive, very counterintuitive, you can say, how is this happening? Okay, but for that, I think we need to indoctrinate ourselves, stay in the rural areas and talk to the, and it's not one rural area. The rural area in Bihar may be vastly different from the rural area in Tamil Nadu. So we need to, where our area of rural, where we want to, rural agenda is, we need to, as entrepreneurs, we need to go there and soil our hands. Absolutely. Uh, Professor Anand, uh, before I let you go, one final advice that you have uh, that you want to leave our audience with, you know, who are unsure about whether they want to get into rural management, whether they want to, you know, have a life that you just described. Uh, I mean, for me, it's a very interesting space to be in. Uh, but according to you, who are the kind of people who should be looking into these kind of courses and why should they be doing it? The rural management program, contrary to me, what many may think, is not a financially punishing one. It gives you a decent, more than decent ROI, if I could put it that way. That's the first thing. So, don't be dissuaded that you won't be getting a decent ROI. But over and above that, look at what else you will be getting apart from a comparable ROI to the other institutions. You will be getting a feeling of accomplishment. You will be actually going to places which no other institute can even dream of going. You'll be going and working and communicating with people who will value you for the rest of their lives for your contributions. And that, I think, is this reward which cannot be quantified by any other way. It's priceless. It's invaluable. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Anand, for your time today. Uh, that was uh, some, you know, insightful information that you have provided through this thank conversation. You. If you guys are interested in knowing more about IRMA, there's a link in the description below. You can go check that out, go check their programs, go check what is the sort of life and the kind of program that you're going to opt for. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Professor Anand, for taking us time and uh, giving us this valuable information. It was my pleasure. Thanks for interviewing me.